Hello again guys, it is Fake Eric, I'm actually with another This Week in Rentura and we have got a big episode coming up. We've got lots to cover including some new cards, a new keyword, new seasonal icons, top 32 contestants for the seasonal tournament and an interview that we conducted with the Cup is Mine, one of our top 32 contenders on the America server, talking about deck of the week with him too. So stick around, hope you enjoy the episode, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. So there has been quite a fair bit of new cards revealed and I'm sure a lot more to come very shortly but we're going to talk about one of the highlights today. This is going to be the new champion card for Piltover and Zorn in Victor. Victor is going to be a 4 mana 2-4 with the keyword of Augment, a new keyword which states if you play a generated card grant me plus one attack. Victor's ability will be a round start, will create a Hex Core upgrade in hand. Hex Core upgrade is a slow speed 1 mana spell that is fleeting which will grant Victor, a random keyword. Victor's champion spell is going to be a death ray MK1, which will deal one to a unit, creating an MK2 in the top three cards of your deck, and then an MK3 as well, both being deal one, deal two, and deal three at one mana, two mana, and three mana. With Victor, once you've played eight plus created cards, that is his flip condition, allowing his new ability to State your created cards cost one less with all the similar abilities alongside it, plus the one, uh, plus the one plus one stats on Victor himself. Uh, Victor seems like an interesting card, very similar to Twist of Fate in that he's heavy utility and very flexible. I'm, I'm assuming we are going to see a lot of experimentation with Victor in plenty of different decks, but a few of the region combinations I suspect to see first will be. A heavy PNZ deck, maybe, with some Sump Works action for the real memers out there. But more than likely, I think Victor can also pair up very well in Targon, with alongside some of the other new cards that have been revealed. There's lots of reasons to play cards that generate cards, and Targon comes with a plethora of generating cards, including gems. So we may see some heavy experimentation with gems. Expect to see that on day one, as well as maybe some of the invoking cards. Expect to see plenty of that kind of action happening too. Uh, other than that, you'll probably see PNZ decks mostly with Victor, maybe a splash of Heimerdinger, and then splashing some other regions that may have some appropriate tools for him. This might be the first time we see a heavy PNZ inspired deck. We've yet to really see, you know, a Piltover and Zorn mono deck at least. I'll say not to specifically be a mono deck, but in a sense where Piltover and Zorn so far has really been that region that suffers from the splash deck. Like there's never really a Piltover and Zorn deck, it's always kind of just a secondary class I would say. So Victor might be able to come into the game providing PNZ a new avenue for deck building and it's going to be a very exciting card and I do hope it becomes competitively viable so we can get some more wide range of decks and that would be really good for the metagame. Alongside some of the other cards revealed here we also have the iterative improvement which will pick a follower create a copy of it in hand with plus one plus one and a two mana burst speed spell very big value tool very big control tool i expect to see this card being experimented quite a lot alongside victor so here you guys are looking at the new seasonal icons for the monuments of power all of them looking pretty fantastic i was a big fan of the previous season ones uh, with the release of Targon, but these ones are looking pretty good. They're really improving their Master's Icon. I know some of the earlier takes on Master's Icon were a little bit underwhelming, but they're definitely starting to improve over time, and it looks a little bit more balanced. It really feels like the Master's Icon looks very uh, powerful and rewarding, and then you've got the Platinum and Diamond ones looking quite strong too. As we go down, it starts to get simpler and simpler. But yeah, not bad ones this season. I'm probably just going to continue to flex my uh, Akali icon. But yeah, looking pretty good. Nice job. Clip of the week. Today, surprise shocker. Got two clips to share today. Both seemed really cool. I want to highlight them both. All right, I'm going to let them... I'm gonna let them beam us for good measure. No champ, that's a fucking hurricane. That's not a stiff breeze. We got blown way over. That's awesome. <laughs> it's a total of 28 damage. Eight of it goes into the sea monster, 20 of it goes into the nexus. No, sorry, 24 damage. Close enough to dead. Nice one. 
Now, this is a terrible feeling. I already watched this one, let me tell you. Uh, looks like things are working pretty well for Chairman. Bit unlucky. Feels what? bad, man. <laughs> so obviously, Chairman's playing a aggressive deck. The opponent played Tri Beam three mana, rips the tasty Fey Folk. Uh, this game just suddenly gets flipped. So feels bad kind of moment. Maybe we'll top deck a Noxian further. Who knows? Nice one. Bit of a half stone moment. So over the course of the weekend, we had our first ever seasonal tournament in Legends of Runeterra where 1,000 players roughly from each respective region battled it out in a five rounds of single elimination to eventually come to the top 32. There's this really cool article on the Runeterra news that actually features each respective region all the participants and also the top 32 players from each region so if you'd like to go check it out yourself i'll leave it down in the link below but congratulations to everyone who qualified or participated and anybody who may have even got the card back if that was the goal you were aiming for now i'm not going to go through each of the lists respectively so if you'd like to do it yourself uh, feel free to go ahead jump down the link Check out the region that you want to. I will say uh, there was a couple of players in a North American top 32 who I was able to scrim against and practice with. So that was a pretty, you know, amazing experience and a good feeling for myself as I didn't qualify myself. I went three and two and uh, at least I got the card back. But um, very shortly, we're going to have an interview here today with the cup is mine. Also alongside our deck of the week. So that's going to be really excited. So get ready in one moment. Deck of the week, one of my favorite segments of every episode. We're going to feature today the Cuppers Mines, uh, Demacia Dragons, Dragons, Shivana, Aurelian Soul, however you'd like to label it. This is one of the decks that Cuppers Mine used uh, in his tournament lineup for the seasonal competition. He was able to make it to top 32. This is one of the highlights of his lineup and also one of the highlights uh, previous to that on his ladder. After having a terrible time trying to play Fearsomes and going down to 0 LP, he decided to build this deck and he managed to go from 0 LP also to a 350 in just a few hours. He was finding good success against some of the popular meta decks that we saw at the time. And then really after the seasonal tournament, there was a few other players that found great success and made the top 32. Also using Dragons, so Dragons was definitely the sleeper deck of the tournament and uh, seeing these few players, the very few players that actually did bring Dragons find that much success really goes to show that uh, at the highest level of competition people will break through and think outside the box and come up with really cool ideas and yeah Congratulations, in a moment we're going to have an interview with Copper's Mine and he's going to tell us all about the deck and his experience in the seasonal tournament Hello Cup, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Good, thank you. How's your day going? Ah, uh, it's almost ended. <laughs> I've just yeah. been uh, practicing a little bit for um, for next for Sunday coming up and trying to figure out what my lineup's going to be, if I'm going to change it or anything. Uh, and then after this, I'm going to head off to sleep. Yeah, uh, where are you from, Cup? I'm based in Toronto, Ontario, out in Canada. So it's like 4.45 in the morning right now. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to speak with me briefly. Uh, no problem. Okay, I think the first thing I want to talk to you about today really quickly, if you have a moment, is uh, I just want to hear about your experience in the seasonal seasonal tournament, man. Yeah, it was, um, it was super interesting. I went in and I was pretty nervous, but I did a lot of scrimmaging beforehand, obviously, with you, with a couple other guys um, that I know pretty well now. Um, and I was pretty confident in the lineup that I brought. Um, all I knew going in, I looked at it, I was like, hmm, what decks do I really want to ban? And I was like, okay, I don't really want to play against Pirate Aggro with my lineup. I don't want to play against Overwhelm decks. And I prefer not to play against, like, Fearsomes. 
Okay. Right. And what do you know? That's the exact lineup that I went up against in the first round. And you high, <laughs> and you high rolled on it. You drew better. No. So um, what happened was, is I was like, you know, because those decks are, we're going to be talking about dragons in a sec. Um, yeah. Dragons are generally pretty weak to pirate aggro. Um, they right. can beat fearsomes, but they have all my other two decks. When I play tested, I found that feel the rush and um, TF so, go hard. They're so not what, great into overwhelm. So just to uh, clarify, we're going to talk about this dragon deck in detail, but what was your lineup? Not including the dragon deck. Yeah, I guess I should start at a high level. Um, I, when I went through and I was figuring out my lineup, I chose to go with comfort more than anything at the end of the day. Um, yeah, I looked at all the matchup tables uh, and everything. That was a popular trend for sure. Like the thing is, is that I looked at the matchup tables and I figured out some stuff and it, fit, it turned out that two of the decks I wanted to bring, which were um, TF Gohard and Dragons, they complemented each other well enough. Uh, and then the third deck I chose after a lot of experimentation, I went back and forth between Zombie Ash and Feel the Rush. And ultimately, fake after our series, our scrimmage one time where you didn't, like the first one I brought Feel the Rush, you mm -hmm. banned it immediately. Yes. And then when I brought Zombie Ash, um, I wasn't able to play TF Go Hard. Yes. And I was like, you know what? Like, I'm really comfortable with TF Go Hard and I'm really comfortable with Dragons. I know that even in bad matchups, I can play my way out of mistakes uh, with a high level of confidence at this point. So I was like, I need something that's good into the field, scares the crap out of people, um, and can win games even if I'm not the best with the deck. Uh, so Feel the Rush matched all those. I did a ton of practice with it. And um, it ended up doing well because I... <laughs> queued into triple aggro three times throughout the tournament Ooh. and in two of those they banned dragon so i got feel the rush and uh tf go hard into triple aggro you... which ended up being quite nice into my favor you queued up into three matches three rounds of triple aggro and they banned your dragons in two of them yeah wow i think and this goes into deck building philosophy is like i have two judgment in my dragons list Yes. And that scares the crap out of a lot of people. The aggro players will look at it, and if they do like a wide swarm strategy and they're playing fearsomes, it, they, you just can't beat it. It's, I built the dragon deck after a lot of frustration playing fearsomes on ladder. I had dropped to like zero LP. I built dragons one day, and I went from zero LP to 350 in like a couple hours of play. Mm -hmm. um, so, that deck was designed to beat that and any player who had fearsomes uh they were probably going to ban dragons because they like playing fearsomes it's the best aggro deck in the game um and if they want to play if they don't think i'm going to ban it they have to ban the dragon deck right so overall overall i guess what i want to get to is uh just this dragon deck because this this uh there, you were you and a few other players actually had found major success with dragons and not a lot of people had actually thought to bring dragons so i'm mesmerized by this and i want to talk about a couple of <laughs> cards in particular and i think i may have brought you brought it up with you in scrimmage yeah. uh, but for this week's deck of the week this is a, this is the deck i'm going to be sharing and i want to talk about star shaping specifically for yeah. just a moment could that have been another reason why this deck got banned against aggro that's amazing it was judgment it was mainly judgment. Right. I would bet a lot of money that people saw that card and were like, I don't want to play it. I'll like, be honest. I'll be honest. I don't, when I say judgment, I don't think about like, I'm playing aggro, I'm going to ban it. I just look at, this is a matchup that I would assume aggro can beat. But you know what? The judgment, the two judgments, that's, uh, yeah. Highlight of the deck. That's just crazy. To, to me, like, when I look at it, it's like Nightfall can't stop a Judgment, for example. No. Uh, overwhelmed decks, one of the big problems that they have, not so much with Judgment, but on their huge creatures that they're playing, Concerted Strike just stops the entire attack, especially if I have a Fused Firebrand in there. Like, they 
all their big units just get taken out in an overwhelm deck. And for Pir right now, the only one over, that was really like heavily hole, favored guy. into it would have been like pirate aggro. So when they look at it, I like pirate aggro just destroys the dragon deck in general. But my opponent probably assumed that I was going to ban pirate aggro. So they assume, they're like, okay, these are my two lineups. I'll ban the dragons. But I kind of five headed it and I was like, I'm not banning pirate aggro. I'm banning overwhelm every time. Hmm. That's amazing. So it ended up working out in my favor in a couple matches for sure. Yeah, and the one, the one, uh, the one copy of Relentless Pursuit did that find much value? Uh, not so. It's super interesting. Uh, when I like look at the deck list, I'll go yeah. over kind of like the philosophy of how it was built. Yeah. The logic behind it is, you want early game challenger units to keep an aggro board narrow and to make sure that you're getting a lot of two for one trades and stopping a lot of units out there. So mm -hmm. Laurent protege as a two of will trade really well into say a mist wraith and then get another block after onto a wraith caller. Even if it won't kill the wraith caller, it's essentially saving you a ton of health. Dragon yeah. guard Lieutenant was a card that um, originally I didn't like, I played a lot of dragons when they first came out when Shivana was even weaker than she is right now. Uh, but there's a ton of three health units in the metagame, namely like Draven, Ezreal, um, even like in a Field of Rush matchup, Wording Stones, that it just takes out really nicely. And if it's going to soak up a Mystic Shot, I'm happy with that because it keeps one of the dragons healthier and makes them have to use even more removal to take that out. So that card ended up being quite good. Um, yeah. It might look a little weird in the list to have one Fiora, but that was specifically... Uh, TF Gohard hates seeing Fiora show up at all uh, yeah. because it just puts so much stress on them and they have to use removal on her immediately or they're screwed. Mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking like into fearsome matchups, Fiora on turn three into bluffing judgment on turn five is a game ending play. Like they can't, no one can fully attack you on that attack if you have a Fiora and eight mana open. It's like it's over at that point if they attack with more than three units and they want to attack with a ton of units. So you can just sit there, do nothing, have not, no judgment in hand, burn your mana, but essentially say, yeah, I just healed for seven here because they didn't attack with everything anymore. That's so amazing. the deck building philosophy was you want those early game units that are going to have value in the late game. Because Dragon's big problem is they get like chump blocked by a 1-1 spider and it, does, yes. it doesn't do anything then. So these yes. challengers pull them out of the way so the dragons can hit face. I don't disagree. I actually had a match actually earlier today playing Go Hard versus Dragons since everyone's playing Dragon decks at the moment and exactly that happened. I just chump blocked him for days and he even found the um what's it, the nine mana uh dragon card that buffs all the dragons. Adrian. Yeah, but he just could it, it, not <laughs> connect. Yeah, it does nothing cuz like yes. if you don't have a way of getting around those kind of decks you kind of get messed up, which is why judgment is so important in that de in the deck because it can clear every single chump blocker on a defensive turn or an offensive turn, and having to deal with like everything just being gone uh, yeah. is massive. The other reason that's why there's a one off of relentless pursuit um, because it can just win you the game on the spot if you play it late. Yeah, whenever I'm facing decks like this, I'm I'm always kind of concerned about this card, but it's not always seen in every dragon list. As of recently, though, I think it's been experimented with more. That's really cool. And the uh, the Fused Firebrand being main decked, that's kind of pog as well. So Fused Firebrand is the most annoying card to play against, as I found throughout scrimmaging, and my opponents were just like, that thing is like, a huge pain in my ass because if you play Ezreal Draven, they have to spend three cards to kill your fused firebrand. And that's a three for one value at that point in terms of card advantage in order to take it out. And they have to take it out because if they don't, this thing is going to judgment them and they can't do any chip damage anymore. Right. Because it has spell shield, it's really hard to kill. And that goes against like an Ash Sejuani matchup too. If they, um, don't have a way to remove the spell shield. Normally you just freeze and you can't judgment Ash to 20. But when you have a fused firebrand on the field, they have to have a specific two card combo, which is much less likely to have in order to be able to do a full swing against you. Hmm. That's cool. And also against the go hard deck, like 
it just doesn't get killed. Yeah, it's just they have to use a uh, go hard on it or the, before they're able to do anything. And it's a nice counter and feel the rush matchups to a potential runation. Um, yeah. That you still have a unit left on the board. Oh, and it also allows you to soft develop into it as well. Oh. Exactly. You're just I like, like okay, if you want to use runation, I get to hit you in the face. Mm -hmm. That's not a bad card. So overall, so, how are you feeling about next week? Um, or this so, Sunday? <laughs> this is gonna it's gonna be super interesting. Like preparing for a thousand person open uh, is a lot different than a thirty two person like top cut. almost like an invite where it's a top cut, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you have to look at the lineups a little more carefully because. For example, do I expect to see triple aggro again? Like my decks were basically designed to be like, okay, I know in the first two rounds, I'm probably going to be playing players who qualified through the last chance gauntlet, for example. Yes. And what was it like when I was playing when I wasn't in Masters when I first started? What kind of decks did I know how to play? And what type of decks um, am I going to see? I was like, I'm probably either going to see really meta decks or I'm going to see someone trying to come up against me with like aggro matchups. So I had to tech my lineup in order to deal with both. But after listening to a lot of the interviews, like Nick interviewed a ton of the 5-0 players I right afterwards. That. Quite inspiring. Um, is huge. And their lineups were super interesting and a lot different than what you would expect otherwise. So like they came in with like, one guy came in with triple Ionia, for example, to deny and nopify everything. And my lineup, as of today, would have probably gotten destroyed by that. Had you so I'm experimenting that? with. Go on, <laughs> yeah, go on, had I sorry. faced that, that's why I think <laughs> there's a huge component of luck to even getting to 5-0. Um, there's some skill involved for sure. Um, I'm not saying anything no, against the, everyone the, who the, went 5-0. The, pro the proper wording towards it is like it's the increasing your chances of going 5-0. That's the um. That's yeah. all you can do prior to the tournament. It's still going to be luck, but there's ways to increase that luck. Like, for example, bringing a unique lineup. I'm not going to say the European player who went 5-0 and with assembly bot lineup wasn't quite lucky, but it was definitely something unique. And that's a true story, by the way. Somebody took assembly bot to 5-0. I... <laughs> so my last match, Fake, was against yes. a guy who was running Katarina and Yasa. Amazing. And Zed in a deck. And I was like, I looked at it and I was like, you got to be kidding me. I'm like, <laughs> this guy's gone 4 0. Oh. Like, if I had faced him in round one, I would have laughed and be like, ha ha ha, it's, it's Yasuo. But when you got to that point, you're like, this guy's a mad lad. Like, how did you win all those games with Yasuo? Like, you're seeing something that I'm not. Uh, and it was tech to beat Gohard because it just had like a bunch of intimidating roars in there with Yasuo, which would just clear the entire field. Hmm. Do you know, and from what I understand too, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know if seeding was like um, scripted by winner versus winner every single round. I think there may have been... It was. It was? So you're telling yes. me so you saw Katarina went 4-0? Yes. Wow. I talked to the guy afterwards too. You did? And he was 4-0. Uh, okay, that's amazing. He was 4-0. He was he had gone undefeated. So I lost the first game to his Feel the Rush deck with Dragons. It was the only match that Dragons lost all day. Uh, I was a little bit tilted after the match because there was a lot of one-offs that he ended up having that were at the exact moment that he needed them. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I had to beat Katarina Yasuo twice, and that had he hadn't lost with that all tournament. Uh, he had gone like four and zero with it, uh, and then yeah. I had to beat it twice. That's the other thing so too. I was the, like the um. The either he's gonna fail the dragon test or yes sorry yeah is either he's gonna fail the dragon test or i'm gonna fail the yasuo test <laughs> like yeah. the common one that people go on ladder like haha you lost the dragons or you lost the yasuo that would have been it well um i don't think i have any other further questions for you but did you want to shout out anyone while you're here <laughs> before i let you go um, Obviously, you're super helpful in helping prepare for everything as well and like being up for scrimmages. 
it helped me refine my lineup a lot. I think there's a couple other guys. I don't know if Gallant's here. He he and I scrimmaged a lot yeah, you uh, Gallant, leading up to the man. tournament. So he went 5-0 and oh as well, uh, oh, no which is really cool to see. Uh, and obviously some guys like Strawman um, and some other names I'm, that escaped me off the top of my head who I practiced with a lot were super uh, core in getting there. So shout outs to them and helping them like them helping me refine my lineup and really get better with the decks uh and i'm excited for next week i am too i wish you the best of luck cup thank you for joining me today and uh i'm sure to have a chat with you in game throughout the week and help you get prepared no problem mate all right have yeah a have luck. a good night you too bye now Cool. So that was a banger of an episode, wasn't it, guys? Um, don't forget to leave a like. Any feedback really helps me push me in the right direction. So if you enjoy seeing this kind of content, you know what to do. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Why don't you jump down in the comments too? Say hello. You know, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see in the near future. Expect to see these uh, this week in Runeterra out weekly. It's one of the concepts I think I want to keep pushing and evolving and improving on. So yeah, as I said, need that feedback, those likes, those subscribes, all that kind of stuff helps out tremendously. You guys have a fantastic day and don't forget to take care of one another. Bye bye.